This is the Wi-Fi board. Uh, it looks very similar to yours. Just a couple notes. This little area down here is the voltage regulator. What it does is it takes the voltage, uh, battery voltage and drops it down to 3.3 volts. Um, even though the connector does have a 3.3 volt output from the Newton, it can't source enough current. So this allows us to regulate down the voltage from the battery directly. Uh, and provide enough current for the Wi-Fi module. Uh, this little uh, polyfuse is kind of just a little bit of a protection so that if something does short on the board to ground, you don't have the whole battery voltage being uh, dumped uh, through a short, uh, you know, just a little safety mechanism. Um, these pads here are meant for debugging. Um, not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but you can solder individual wires to each of these. Um, this is your ground connection. This is your battery voltage. The other thing you can do is you can actually power the board with um, 6 volts to the VIN and ground pins. Um, and then the VREG enable, you need to provide 3.3 volts because that actually turns this on. So you'll notice it goes to pin 1 here. When the Newton uh, selects the internal serial slot, this pin will go high, indicating to the board that uh, it wants to be used by the operating system and so this pin goes high turns on the voltage regulator and uh, hence this uh, module comes on it does take a little bit of uh, time so um, you know there might be a little bit of a delay actually later on I'll show you my uh, Newton internet enabler script and it will uh, actually delay for a second or so just to give things time to power on Okay, I've installed the board. Uh, just a, another little note about the pads on the back here. Uh, these are designed in case you need to uh, reset the, um, the module. Uh, the, the module does have a auto baud rate detect, so whatever baud rate you select on the host, Newton, uh, the module will match, but you can actually send commands to the module which will fix the baud rate. Um, you really don't want to do that, but if for some reason you like programmed it for a bad baud rate and you couldn't get it back, you could use these pins here uh, to um, to reset. So, uh, and this is just the antenna that I'm using. Um, I, I have gotten connections without an antenna, but um, I usually just tuck it right in here. Um, so, let's flip it over, power it on. So all the driver package, you'll see interior, internal serial slot appear in the standard preferences app. So, you know, under extras, uh, prefs. And these are those checkboxes that I sent you. These are my settings. Specifically, you want to route the modem port to the internal serial slot. That will um, turn on the module and route the serial signals to that interior slot. It will also disable the interconnect port. Uh, so, while I don't recommend having two devices hooked up, one inter the internal one and the external one, in theory, it should be disabling that uh, serial port when you connect to the modem port. Your first test should be using PT100, which I keep in my dock because I use it so often. Um, let me just connect here, um, and I'll choose the connection so that you can see my settings here. So direct serial session, no login script to the internal Wi-Fi, 115.200, hardware flow control, no local echo, N81. Those are the settings I use. Okay, so let's connect to the module here. Uh, you mentioned you got some bogus characters. Uh, you'll note that I don't get that here. Um, but I'm not exactly sure what that might be. That you, like you said, it might indicate a hardware problem, but I'm not sure. If you type A T, you see it does echo. And when you press enter, you're actually gonna get an error. If you look up the manual to the Y reach card, the command set actually is a enhanced command set. A T, then the plus sign, then the letter I. A T plus I. You press enter there. You get I OK, indicating that you know the module is working properly. Uh, you send a bunch of commands to the module using this setting. For example, you can configure your Wi-Fi access point 
uh, username, password, all that sort of thing, so that um, you know the module will connect to to the Wi-Fi uh, hotspot in your home or wherever else you're connecting. Um, next, I just wanted to show you under uh, Internet Setup, which is part of the Newton Internet Enabler. I use a PPP connection, which is protocol PPP server. Uh, user ID is Jake. Um, that's something you actually have to configure with an AT command just to set your username. Um, theoretically, you don't need it, but the, the module... Uh, doesn't need it, but the Newton doesn't like it when it, you don't have a username in there. So since you have to put one in for the Newton's sake, then you've got to configure it on the module. Um, oh, my battery's going to die. Um, this is my DNS server, which is actually wrong for my current network setup. So while we're in here, we can change this is my old my old network configuration. Um, dot one. Is my new network configuration, and then uh, the login script here. But again, one fifteen two hundred n one. Uh, but the login script here is the important part. You'll notice a, a two second delay. That's just to give the module time to power up. This command at plus lat twenty three is optional. It allows you to actually telnet into the module once you're connected. If you want to send additional commands, you can skip these two lines. If you don't, you know, want to play with that, this is an important line here: at plus i s p p p colon zero. This actually tells the module to start a PPP session. Then it says wait for OK, then done. As far as the Newton is concerned, it's dialing up to a, a hotspot or a, an old PPP server, like in the 1990s. It, it thinks it's calling to an old dial-up provider. The module is providing a PPP server similar to what an old dial-up provider would be uh, using. So just to kind of give you a little quick demo, if we can do it before my battery dies. Um, uh, okay, yeah, so if you go like NetHopper, and then you go, oh, let's clean up, let's connect. You'll notice that when you connect, it's running the PP script, it waits two seconds, engages the PPP driver, and then connects. I don't know what we're going to get here, because not a lot of pages work with NetHopper anymore, but you can see it is working, it is connected to the internet. What do we get here? This site requires JavaScript. Well. It shows that it is, does in fact work, uh, and we did connect to the internet, and we did do it over Wi-Fi. My hotspot is WPA2, so you're able to get everything working. Hopefully this video helps. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.